I think we can actually move to the next topic because the next topic is actually about a sidechain use case, right? Oh yeah, let's do that before we do the funny stuff. And it is actually related to the question because the question was asking if um, we will be developing uh, DEX and uh, EVMs and if we will also have a sidechain potentially for businesses. So Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the technology does allow that. And um, at the base of a DEX is actually... um, at the base of the functionality of a DEX is a liquidity pool, right? Correct. And so what we'll talk about uh, today is a liquidity pool that would be um, basically sitting on a side chain, and that would be the base of a DEX. So currently what we have is most of the quote-unquote DEX are actually smart contracts that are Correct. non-immutable. They are actually multi-sig smart contracts. And then they are on one blockchain. So obviously there is the Uniswap case. Uniswap is actually um, immutable smart contract. They can't be modified. Um, however, their interface is centralized, right? Correct. So it is, it is kind of blurry. There was a lot of drama when they removed 100 coins or something like that. Um, so they, they do have some control. However, the um, liquidity pools themselves they they are not um, in control of Uniswap. However, the problem that there is, the limitation that they have, is that they're not interoperable, right? It's only on Ethereum, and then you will be able to do a liquidity pool for all the Ethereum token, but then you won't be able to move out of that. Or, again, you will have to use a mechanism, either a completely centralized mechanism, or you will have to use a smart contract, which has um, multi-sig. So Exactly. So smart contracts themselves, even though we're talking about the contracts being immutable, there's private keys. They're either owned by someone. They're either controlled by the contract. Maybe they're using some sort of multi-party computation on them. Maybe they're gone. I have no idea. But they need to have keys. Somebody has access. That's the issue with these kinds of technologies is is there is a centralized point because it's not on chain. It's the off-chain stuff that makes things riskier. It's the off-chain things that make things um, have issues. If we look at the hacks that you had compiled a list from for the longest time, I think you had billions and billions of dollars that had been lost from hacks That includes smart contract platforms. It's not a blockchain, but that's a smart contract that is a platform that most of the time people will just call it a blockchain. It's operating. Or there's been DEXs that have been leveraged um, because of that. I mean, so I I think we can help those DEXs, if anything. Um, But yes, it comes down to what Neegs was saying. UTXO blockchains have transactions and those transactions are unique utxo blockchains like bitcoin or litecoin or divi or dash and you start putting all of the different blockchains in them each receipt is a single transaction and they're unique they're not pooled together balances are are not an illusion but balances are an aggregate of those totals it makes it more difficult to aggregate into a pool individual utxo transactions because each one is unique so that's the issue that's why these smart contracts do work well um and that's why that that atomic swap based dexes didn't work well um, because of this limitation on utxos this new technology with the side chains allows a bridging in a much better way, a poolability of coins of those transactions into the pool trustlessly, right? We're not trusting a, a smart contract. We're not trusting an individual. We're not trusting multi-party computation. We're not trusting the said immutability of a smart contract. It is on chain. It is not off chain. And I kind of went on a rant here, but the fact is, is that a DEX, as complicated as it is on a side chain, is pure. It's beautiful. It stays in the ownership of the coin owner. 
um, until said transaction happens. And that is beautiful. Let's talk about that, that process because, so as an example, if I'm a user and I have, let's say Litecoin and I want to turn it into, uh, I don't know what, uh, what's the Thor chain coin? Is it runes? Something like Something that. Like that or yeah. if I want to turn it into, let's say that one, and I, I'm specifically choosing non Ethereum coins. And, and I, I think I, we're, we're talking about Ethereum. I think Uniswap's also on Polygon, isn't it? Or there's another one. Probably. Yeah, you, there is, so yeah, you could yeah. do it, you could do it through other ones too, but, but the process, if I have Litecoin and I want to use a liquidity pool to, to actually swap out right. funds, not, I'm not talking about supporting you, but the process is I have to, I have to send my Litecoin to a, a Litecoin address that Correct. is controlled by some party. Uh, now that party could be, uh, a number of, of, um, of uh it could be a, a multi-sig wallet that is that is controlled by a number of other machines the oracles that then yes. will say okay your 10 litecoin showed up in this address it came from your address this these will appear uh on ethereum as as wrapped litecoin or sometimes it's referred to or some other form of uh rep of litecoin representation yes it is that representation that you that are sent to you and that's the bridge you just crossed, right? So you, you just crossed a bridge and we've already talked a lot about the difference between a, a side chain, uh, moving to a side chain and a bridge, which is in, on a Divi side chain, you will just send it to an address and it will be yours on the side chain. That's it. Correct. So you have to do this process to bridge it over to, um, Ethereum. Now you have it. Now you've got a wrapped tokenized version of your Litecoin. And again, I say your Litecoin, but it's in somebody else's <laughs> address right now. <laughs> it's in a smart contract. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, on Litecoin, it's in somebody else's address, right? You can't, you actually can't get that. Uh, Correct. That's, that would be true. Right. So now you can put it, you know, you can put it into a liquidity pool and, and take out. But wrapped. what are you putting in the liquidity pool? You're not You're, putting the Litecoin in the liquidity pool. No, the wrapped Litecoin. The, yes, exactly. It's a I'm, tokenized yes. version. Yeah, exactly. the tokenized version of it, right? And so now you have you 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 send it into this liquidity pool and pull out, as I said, uh, uh, I think it's runes, uh, wrapped runes, <laughs> right? And now I have to go backwards through this process. I have to put that into the bridging smart contract that will make it appear uh into uh their address on the on thor chain uh which will then send it forward to my address on thor chain so that is that is a the best i can do uh in a using a liquidity pool to swap a coin that's a and lot I of think, work because you got to go in yeah. mm -hmm. to a contract that contract is then validated right so the, yep. the that transaction is who's the who's the governor there that's all i would right. want to know um, and then it goes into the pool and then a transaction happens in that pool. And then it goes back out to the smart contract is what you're saying. And now you said it's going to Thor or is it going to Litecoin? I'm trying to get a visual. No, here, it, was, so. it was going from my example was from Litecoin, which I'm familiar with to Thor chain, which came first to my head and I'm less familiar with. <laughs> so Okay. 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 Cause I think <laughs> it goes, you, know, you can get back onto Litecoin again. Right. So there's one, two three, four, five jumps, if I get it correctly, going off Litecoin back into Litecoin to somebody else. So there, yeah, there's it's a, a simplest there's form, jumps. right? Yeah. And so now hearing that, you can imagine how with DeFi and the moves to move from one coin to another, or you can imagine actually all the farms uh, activity and um, the different quote unquote utility that have been created around DeFi yeah. every time it's <clears throat> multiple transaction for one move. And so what you can see is you understand how now the network is congested, right? And so oh, yeah. the, the advantage of having, having a side chain is now, first of all, you remove all those transactions or most of them. And then you also have the ability to scale because you don't have all of that between like on one chain. Um, if ever you get uh, limited, you see that this side chain is now uh, offering the service with 
sorry, way too high fees because it's congested, you can probably count to 10 before there is actually uh, some different, like another side chain popping up to actually compete with that one with like very low fees because now it doesn't have the volume. That's so, true. That is true. And I it's less that, jumps. It's pure. It's it's user to user or it's user to pool. At that point, it's still two stops. Um, and <clears throat> it's very pure in that respect where the sovereignty of the coin owner is still maintained. No decision is made until the coin owner makes the decision to participate. The coin owner has the ability to remove their liquidity from a pool uh, up and you know up until the point before it actually transacts, um, and then on the other side, any recipient can join and then procure from a pool or decide not to procure from a pool, and it's directly user to user at this point. It's there's just this. It, it's on chain. I think that's what I keep stressing, and I repeat that over and over again. The purity that Satoshi designed was everything was on chain. And I think that's the key thing. We have to repeat that as the mantra. It's on chain. It's not, not a, a an external mechanism, a virtual machine. It's not a layer two. It's not a, a layer three smart contract chain. It's not that at all. It is, it is pure. That's the only thing I can say. <laughs> so let's, take a sec let's take a second. Oh, go ahead. Um, before I, I s switch us off track. Yeah. Right. So, no, I was, I was just going to summarize, actually. I was going to say that the liquidity pool, again, is kind of the simplest ID you can imagine for, for the sidechain because now it is um, some kind of um, compatibility layer, if you will, between, uh, between the two chains and now this um, this liquidity pool is totally trustless as a voice you were mentioning and it is also not dependent on the actual layer one it has its own validators they are earning uh, their they, they are earning part of the fees so that the system is actually um you know efficient and it is auto sufficient it pays for itself so that actually you have a real business model um otherwise the thing dies and we also believe that it is one of um, the advantage and maybe some would see it as a disadvantage because now you need to have your own validators. But at the well, end of the day, we also believe that it's better to have uh, this validity to show that it is supported, it is used, and uh, it has its own security layer. And it's not just um, a random smart contract that was, um, you know, um, started by anybody that could uh, end up in the more than i think now 80 billion uh, that have disappeared in uh, scams and and yeah. other so tricks. let's talk that's actually where i was going to take us to so because we described how funds move but we didn't describe the actual side chain that does this it's not the side chain is not in my example is not a uh, Litecoin to uh, Thor chain liquidity pool. The side chain is a liquidity pool side chain. Um, and Correct. so the, the, the important part there is, and, and what Diggs was just kind of hinting at is the way that this works may provide more growth, but I claim it provides more safety in that the the swaps you can do and the liquidity pools you can you can support are only the chains that are directly connected to the side chain. So when this all starts for Divi and the first one comes out, right, and only Divi has this technology, uh, it's very difficult to actually have a liquidity pool because there isn't some other coin <laughs> that the side chain would be connected to. So um, we will, you know, that is going to be the first part to it. So we're going to have two coins. It'll be Divi and some other coin that has adopted this technology. And now we can have a liquidity pool because two coins are connected to this side chain. Correct. If we want a third coin, let's say I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm going for big, but not the biggest. I'm going to say, uh, let's pretend Litecoin adopts this. Now that the same liquidity pool side chain has a Litecoin node attached to it. And now I can have, uh, I can have two liquidity, I can have three liquidity pools. I can have the Divi uh, Thorchain one, right. as an example, I can have the Divi Litecoin one, and then there's a Litecoin Thorchain one that's possible. Now I add another chain that adopts the technology. And don't forget, the 
the benefit to the users is you move funds in there directly. There's no bridges, no attack surface to move your funds in there and utilize it either supporting or by swapping. All of that is beneficial. The other beneficial part is that there is one Litecoin, one Divi, one Thorchain. You know that that's the one. Correct. On Ethereum, on, on uh, there's there's you know there's like I don't know seven Bitcoin representations. Um, you know, is that the right one? You, you know, you, you got to know. You have to be careful that you're sending stuff and that you're. Uh, I remember. I think both Liquid and StakeCount both had ST ETH that they were right uh, it was the name of their token right that that stuff doesn't happen in this model right there's there's just litecoin on the on the side chain there's just divi on the side chain there's just thorchain on the Correct. side chain uh that so that confusion disappears with this model um so all around there's a lot of benefit the hard part is any joe schmo can't just make a coin that shows up in the liquidity pool you actually have to attach a node to the to the sidechain that is of an existing blockchain that has this technology in it. Um, so that's the work. Uh, that's it's a right. different kind of work. And again, this can take many different shapes and forms. Like this is the ID that we have, mm -hmm. but then some people could take a different ID and then only restrict some assets or have something which is going from an an asset that is being traded to one private chain where they would be selling a private asset within a you know private economy. I mean, all those things are possible with side chains. Yep. And I think that the liquidity pool, the ability to do the transfer between two assets and have this AMM, right? Automatic market making. Yeah. It's definitely something that can is be, it can be used as a base for many different services. And you were mentioning that it doesn't make another Litecoin. I mean, in reality, it will make another Litecoin. You will have a tokenized Litecoin on that. Well, yeah, that but, it's not but it's one. not the same. It's not. No, I, no, I understand exactly. what no, you're I saying. I agree, is, but for the confusion of people. It is not people, the same at all. It's, it, is, it is the ownership of that. It is that coin. That's the whole method of communication is that it is... It is the sovereign representation of that asset. It is not tokenized because the tokenization is off chain, and then no, no. I think that's the thing. On I think it yeah. is the actual real tokenized that it, is trustless, right? Because mm -hmm. tokenized means that now you have something else representing okay, okay. your initial so asset. It, Right? You're meaning in the general sense tokenized. Right. Uh, so I, I, I agree with that then. So well, I just want to be clear when we speak about tokenization, there is an extraction that goes away from the main chain. It goes away from, um, it becomes layers and layers and layers away. Uh, it's a funny conversation. I was on uh, Spaces uh, a while back and Nick was on the Spaces. And, you know, Nick is really involved in some of these layer extraction chains um and he does he likes nfts right that's one of the things if you follow some of his tweets he's really big into nfts every single movement you get away where you tokenize that asset you get further and further away from the native chain at some point in time it's not possible to come back i fear for that for some of these people mm -hmm. it it is it is this is pure um, it is a, I can't even disclose what, what it is, but how it works is, is pure. That's all I want to say. <laughs> so I won't say anymore. I'll start saying too much. <laughs>